guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can test your camera's dynamic range at home and it's gonna be very easy, so let's go. Now for this test, you're going to need a camera, a lens of choice, a tripod, uh, a room which doesn't change um, exposure or brightness, so maybe just close down the shutters, the curtains, and just turn off the light, so the room should stay exactly at the same brightness uh, throughout the test. And you're going to need a gray card, or in my case, a laptop with a neutral gray color. I'm gonna take a photo of my laptop screen. I'm gonna put my camera really close to the monitor. Um, I'm gonna put everything into manual settings and I'm going to put my lens into the um, defocus. So I'm, I'm going to defocus my lens just because I don't want the lens to focus on the teeny tiny pixels on the screen. I just want a smooth gray color. Now don't worry about the brightness of whatever it is that you're taking a photo of. As long as you don't take a photo of a black hole or the sun, we're gonna be in the ballpark of your dynamic range. Now the dynamic range is basically your camera's ability or your sensor's ability to see in the shadows and the highlights at the same time. So the more shadows and the more highlights you can put into one image, the higher the dynamic range is and the image is going to be less contrasty. The dynamic range is measured in stops of light. It's not an absolute measure, it's a relative measure to what you currently have. So if you have a certain exposure and then you double the light of that exposure, double the brightness, you basically add one full stop of dynamic range. And if you have the amount of light, if you take away half, you go to minus one. So regardless of where you are, you're always adding, doubling, or having your exposure. And this is the brilliance behind everything in photography. It's always double and have the light. So how many times you can double the light to change the image from all the way black to all the way white, that's your dynamic range. In your case, if you guys are wondering what I'm doing, I'm hiking a local hill, I'm practicing my talking, my breathing, as I do these vlogs because, you know, I'm working on myself to be a better YouTube presenter. Yeah, I didn't thought this through. So in my experiment, I'm going to use an aperture of, I think, f11. I'm gonna close the aperture down quite a lot because I wanna reduce the vignetting of the lens uh, because that affects the test. I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain a little bit later when we look at the results and see what I mean. I'm going to use ISO 200, which is my native ISO for the Lumix G9. That's gonna give me the widest dynamic range and you can do multiple tests in different ISO values. Uh, to actually see how ISO affects the dynamic range of your camera. Now, in case you guys didn't know, the higher the ISO, the lower your dynamic range is. Not just the noise higher, but the lower the dynamic range. So, since I take all of my photos with ISO 200, pretty much because I have the benefit of using a tripod and I take photos of stuff that don't move, I can always, like 99%, I can always go with ISO 200. So that's what I'm testing with this camera. Now for the result assessment, I will use Lightroom because that's the software I edit all of my photos. And it's, I think it's really important to use the software in which you edit your photos because that's actually um, the place where you get your dynamic range. Because it makes no sense if your camera has 15 stops of dynamic range um, declared by the manufacturer and you only get, I don't know, 13 or 10 uh, in Photoshop or Lightroom. So I think that's like a personalized test just for you, or in this case, just for me. Now my Lumix G9 has declared 12, actually it's 12 and a half stops of dynamic range. And if I get to anywhere near 12, I will be really happy. So between 11 and 12 is something that I'm expecting from this test. Uh, so yeah, let's just see, let's just start taking photos. Okay, so for the photo shoot, I'll be taking photos all the way from one eight thousandth of a second to 30 seconds. So you see, it doesn't really matter how bright or dark the object you're photographing is or the gray card is, as long as you can make it pure white and pure black, you're pretty much in the ballpark. And I'll be changing the shutter speed in one third stop increments. So I made all the shots, I actually went in reverse. I started with a 30 second long exposure and went all the way to 32 thousandths of a second, really kind of capturing the biggest exposure window I could possibly capture. So I'm going to start with the image number one, which is this one, 30 seconds. I was actually shooting at F4 because I wanted to show you guys the effect of vignetting um, and why you should be careful um, not to inc include that in your, in your analysis. So when we start here, we go to the develop tab. And you can see it's all red. Now I've already have the clipping on. If you don't see this, you just press J on your keyboard and you will see red will be the highlight clipping and blue color will be the shadow clipping. So if you start with image number one, image number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
these are all clipped now this is where you see the vignette starting to appear so this is the edges are, are already darker but i'm looking at the center of the image now i'm going to compare the center of the image in both the high the, the brightest image and also in the darkest image so when the center of the image becomes white like right now this is the first image the first exposure where my camera actually in the center of the frame thinks that it's not completely white now i can also check this if i go over here right click show lab color values now lab is different than rgb rgb colors are basically red um, green and blue but if you change that to lab you have the, the red channel converted into the luma or the, the brightness the lightness channel which is basically your your brightness curve and then the channels a and b control the colors the a controls the um, green and magenta and the b channel controls the blue and the yellow i think so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the l channel the lightness channel so here i can see 99.7 percent brightness if i go another step where it's clipped you can see it's 99.9 .9. so the first one that was not clipped was about 0 0.3 under the 100 so this one i'm going to mark with one star this will give me the star this is the first frame which i consider within the dynamic range and then i go forward so next next okay so basically these all of these images are dimming down slowly but surely but nothing is clipping yet so i'm going forward forward 42 43 44 45 46 okay and at 46 we can see some vignetting start to appear uh, some vignetting start to appear on the edges if i move the next frame 47 here the vignette is already quite um well quite present now since i can't really make out where the clipping starts if i zoom in at number 46 for instance you can see that the noise is already kind of clipping so because i have noise i, I shot this at iso 200 which gives me the least amount of noise but it's it's already starting to appear so one image before is almost zero noise this one is kind of noisy and then the next one is noisy. so this one i would consider clipped and if i look at the l value here uh 0 0.2 the next one 0 0.12 okay so it kind of stays at around 0 0.12 this one is kind of nudging that 0.3 so i would consider this image to be the final image which my camera still sees a little bit of gray it's not completely black so if i put another star here so I'll press number one i have now two images that are marked the, both images kind of mark the beginning and the end of my exposure so if i go to the library here is the brightest image which is already considered as a in the dynamic range and then the darkest image now since all of these photos were taken with one third of a stop increment that means that each third photo gives me a full stop so this is the first one second one so one third stop two thirds one stop one two two stops three four five six seven eight nine the more the merrier ten 11 12 i have exactly 12 stops of dynamic range measured at home on my lumix g9 this is the way you can measure dynamic range and you can repeat this in multiple iso with multiple iso values there you can see then how iso affects your dynamic range now this is not a laboratory test but i think if you're using the software which you edit in that's actually for you the most accurate dynamic range test of your camera because you're using the software for analysis the same software you're actually using for editing so it doesn't get any more personal and accurate for you so thanks for watching guys i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope you've learned something if you have any questions leave them in the comment section or just say hello um, hit the like button hit the notification bell as well um, so you get notified of all my videos thanks for watching i'll see you guys probably tomorrow